Okay, hi everybody. Uh, thank you for coming. My name is Sonia. Uh, I work in the community management division at the OpenStack Foundation and part of my role is to also manage the ambassador program. These lovely people who you see sitting behind me. Uh, so just first, no, we're not, no cigar? No, okay, we're not moving. Here we go, okay. So, uh, so the purpose, just want to give you guys an overview of why we did this and why the program is here. So then you have an understanding of also where you can get help from these guys and what they can do for you. So the purpose of why it all started was firstly to improve communication between the foundation and the user groups. So we have user groups all over the world in many different regions, so it's hard to keep a track of everything. But if we have one person or a couple of people in each place who can talk to the user groups, hear what they are saying and what feedback they have, it makes our job a lot easier to make it better for the user groups. So these guys are a really pivotal part of us knowing what's going on with them. The second part is mentoring and advice for user groups. So when they first start out, there are times when they're not sure what to do, whether there's a particular sponsor they should seek out or where to get sponsors, who should speak. The, the list goes on. There's a great number of things that have to be done to get a user group up and running. So part of these guys' job is to help those new ones, the new groups get through that process. And then also if there's questions that come up along the way for a more experienced group, they can also guide them. And the third one is advocating for OpenStack. So attending OpenStack Day, speaking on behalf of the, te well, the technology and promoting how great it is. That's, that's part of this role also, like getting out there, networking and getting the word out. And lastly, one of the biggest benefits is their local knowledge. So being able to know what's going on in the region and what the culture is all about, that really helps with improving that communication and also being in a smooth process within that region. So they do a fantastic job of all these things, and I'm going to pass on to Lisa, who's going to introduce herself. Okay, thank you very much, Sonia, and also thank you very much, Sonia, for everything you've done. Sonia, please give Sonia a big round of applause. Sonia has come on board very recently, and she works for Tom Fifield, who we all know and love, and um, and she's come up to speed really quickly, and uh, and and she does this all from Australia, which is like a completely different time zone. So it just proves that you know it doesn't matter where you are located geographically wise, and and we just are so proud of her. So thank you so much for all you've done in a really short period of time. Um, as she said, I'm Lisa, Lisa Marie Nanfi. You can call me Lisa, and um, I run the San Francisco Bay Area User Group. Um, which I might venture to say is the world's largest open stock user group. Yeah. I don't know, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, not just showing off. It's just, we're lucky. We were the first ones. We're meetup.com slash open stack. And, um, and we get a lot of international uh, participation as well. We're 6,000 plus members. Um, and we do that because we, uh, we, we broadcast our meetups through, through Google Hangouts. I do two a month. We always record the sessions and put them on the website. Their content is out there. It's fabulous. And we try to help the other geos just by giving the, the content out there. Um, and, and, so it's, and, and I send news, newsletters out bi-monthly as well to all the 6,000 members. Um, we, we negotiate you know, discounts for them at passes, the conference passes and, and things like that. So, so we really try to, to, try to go to bat for our users and, and even in other geos, so we feel quite lucky um, to have a 6,000 plus user group membership. Um, and, I, and I am the US OpenStack ambassador, I guess is what you probably wanted me to say. Um, I, I'm very proud to very quickly be sharing this role with Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> who is hopefully going to help me do the, the East Coast um, because the U.S. is big. And so I will, I think at that point, do everything west of the Mississippi. I love how they decide that the U.S. is divided by the Mississippi River because that's not even half of the, I mean, it's kind of more like, oh, the people on the East Coast, like, the, the, like where the part that the hurricanes hit, We'll give that to Sheila, but Lisa, you have everything else. Um, so anyway, it's a big country, um, and so we might negotiate territory. We might like redistrict here, not to like bring up a sore spot, um, politically speaking. But anyway, uh, so I'm a U.S. ambassador, and if you are in the U.S., and particularly if you're in the West Coast, ping me, and then the fabulous Sheila, who is sitting there waving, is soon to be helping us on the East Coast as well, and super qualified. She does Northern Virginia, and she's run meetups for years. So, um, so thank you. Thank you all for coming.
Oh, you have my. <laughs> yeah. So I'm uh, Erwan Galen, uh, ambassador for uh, West Europe. I'm running uh, OpenStack uh, user group for France since uh, five years. Uh, an ambassador since the beginning of the program. So, so we are very proud to to um, integrate a new ambassador. So Lisa Marie for US. So you are like a big president for US. Unique. Uh, <laughs> new. I've been doing this for four years. But no, no, new. new. New things with ambassador. Not <laughs> only running uh, uh, the your user group. So uh, uh, during this session, we will uh, make a report about uh, about the community, about uh, new new members on, on new action uh, of the group. So, Martin. Okay, so my name is Martin Kish, and I'm also the ambassador for Europe together with Erwan. And uh, I'm organizing the user group in Hungary and organizing the OpenStack Day in Budapest. So, yeah, that's all. Uh, my name is Marcelo. I, I am the ambassador for um, Latin America. And uh, I help in some countries uh, like uh, Brazil, Argentina, Chile, Peru, and other countries there. And uh, also I am a coordinator of uh, uh, Brazil user group and organizer of uh, OpenStack Day Brazil. Hi, uh, my name is Akihiro uh, Hasegawa from Japan. And uh, I'm the first uh, OpenStack Day's organizer. And now OpenStack Days is a kind of a very important event for the local user group. I would like to share the such kind of information and uh, uh, sharing the such knowledge with you. And so um, thank you so much. And uh, I'm Akira Yoshiyama from Japan. Uh, I, uh, I'm Mm, I am um, uh, one of uh, uh, web administrator of uh, Japan Open Tech User Group, and uh, thank you for coming. So yeah, we, we spoke of uh, Lisa Marie. So said you are doing this for a long time, but new, new in the group, and also uh, new ambassador since the last uh, uh, OpenStack summit in Barcelona. Uh, il y a Alex Sejef, uh, who is based in uh, Russia. Uh, so here you have the complete uh, list of ambassadors. So US uh, will change soon. Yeah, it <laughs> it's looks quite crowded. There. <laughs> <laughs> that northern. Sheila, we need you. Okay, uh, so one of the, so we, we are in, in continuous uh, link with all user groups and since the last OpenStack Summit, uh, the new logo wa was published, but all, all the user group was complaining not to have uh, their logo. So Sonia also, you, you, you have shared this uh, to, to the users. So um, now, uh, now you're complaining. We liked the square. We liked it. It was good. <laughs> it just it's good. Change is good. Not complaining. I loved I loved my little stickers. No, no complaining SMK. not not to have received the new logo and oh, still, oh, still to have oh, all I design. See. So I it see. was this, this complaint. So demanding. Look what you walked into. <laughs> Uh, we, we won't get any new logos until Sydney, right? So we can create some print materials with the existing logos and yeah. we will keep it for a little bit longer time. And just the of course. You know, the, f the first question I got asked in January when you put out the new logo and I put it on the, the website and I put it on the Twitter feed, um, and I, we did the meetup at GoDaddy, right, where they, where they talked about running Docker on OpenStack, and it was an awesome user group thing. Um, and it, it was, I think, in January. And the first question, they were like, when are the T-shirts coming out? <laughs> it's like, okay, keep your shirt on. It's like, we just got the logo. So if you want to give us T-shirts, apparently the user group is, is clamoring for them. 
work on it. You're working on it. Okay. Yeah. We, I think we even have a sponsor for it from the, I think the Trilio guy signed up for that. So. Yeah, basically it is a very important question and I think the foundation is working on that. It's a very During the question. last three years. Oh yeah, the t-shirts? We can giga, not exactly the shirts, but some swags for the user groups. Might be the most important Maybe question. Maybe what we can give away for yeah. them. So Edge I think it is an important question. Edge containers integration with OpenStack, we got that covered. But when is the swag coming? It's a work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you though? With the new OpenStack logo, Gary Kevorkian, Pasadena and LA user group committee. Thank you so much, Gary. Yeah. Can, can we just know who's here? So who here runs a user group? Can you raise your hand? Yeah, love it. Okay, awesome. From all over the world, too. Okay, cool. Just so we know who we're talking to. Okay, and uh, basically we get some new official user group statuses. For, for example, we have uh, a new official user group in London, in Europe. And uh, yeah, if, if I, we are realizing well, we have new official user group in Los Angeles and San Diego. <laughs> awesome. So basically what this official status means that basically we have some requirements against the groups that we will have a very diverse organizer set up for the user group and uh, basically they need to do meetings very regularly. It means yeah, it can be even three months or every month or every week. It depends on no. the local group. And also, it, uh, it has not to be driven by only one company. So, so you can find it on the OpenStack uh, ambassador page on, on groups.openstack.org all these rules. So, so with this status, you have support with uh, more support with the foundation, and uh, you can apply. Uh, you can apply on the on the website. So, also a big list of uh, new user groups. So, uh, Phoenix, uh, Ren in France. So. Uh, in an in a independent uh, part of France, um, and also Belarus, and uh, Mexico City, and Santiago uh, for uh, South uh, America. So quite, uh, quite active. Chile, Chile, Chile not Chile. Chile. Uh, so Santiago is from Chile. Yeah, yeah. So when, when they asked me to be ambassador in the beginning of the year, um, the first thing I tried to do was recognize the user groups that were contributing so much to our community. Um, and, you know, we kind of knew who they were because you know who's out there just doing the work and putting themselves out there. Um, I gave Gary a shout out because of the work he's doing in Pasadena for, for many years has been so fantastic. And I, for some reason, he wasn't recognized as an official user group. If you go and look at the I, I track the US, so we've got nine official, which means like if you look at the um, user groups, they have the red logo with the orange, the red square, the red OpenStack logo. Do you have an official name for that? The red OpenStack square, um, that thing. Uh, so theirs is red, and then the, the 36 of the rest of them in the US are, were gray. And uh, so I started looking at that and I said, Garrett, like, what the heck? Why? I mean, you've been doing this user group for so long, and why is your thing gray? So we started figuring out, you know, what it takes to become an official user group. And it turns out he was doing all the things for so long. Um, John Sardaris in San Diego, also uh, the, uh, the best candidate for that. And so the first thing I did uh, as ambassador was, was to reach out back to Sonia and Tom and just be like, hey, these guys are bringing it you know, every month in their community. They've been doing it for so long and they need to have this official user group status. So you know, if, if those of you that are running user groups in your community and you don't have the official status, you, you might should have it. Um, um, and it might just be a matter of contacting your ambassador and figuring out how to get that official status. Um, and, then, and, then, and then having your ambassador really showcase the fabulous things that you're doing in your user community. Um, and maybe later, if we have time, I'll talk about some of the amazing things that Gary and John are doing in, in LA and San Diego and even what we're doing in the, in the SF Bay. Um, but that, those, that was my first task. I went after those two and um, coming after the rest of the US next, because I know there's a lot of goodness happening out there in other regions. So also ambassador are supporting events. Um, so one, one of uh, the events uh, we have supported for uh, 
uh, with a foundation for last year is FOSDEM. So a few people in the audience uh, were also at this event. Um, so a big event with uh, more than 6,000 people. Um, also, ambassador, most of ambassadors are running uh, OpenStack Day, so they, they, they help uh, new, new groups who want to, to launch this, uh, this type of event. So since the last, uh, last summit, uh, a uh, huge number of uh, OpenStack Day uh, have been launched. So we can speak of Prague. In France, we, we have launched uh, the, the first uh, OpenStack Day. Uh, for uh, for Asia, so Thailand, Thailand, yeah, you, you, you are there. So, so Thailand is uh, maybe first uh, open stack days, but uh, already in Asia have the open stack days event several countries, yes. So Japan, you were saying Japan, yeah, is a, just gives the number of your open stack day, which, which is oh Japan. Giant. So <laughs> you know the open stack day is originally founded in the Tokyo and. <laughs> This one, our event is uh, around uh, 2,000, 3,000 people and the two day event. So, you know, the budget is uh, very big. <laughs> 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 it's pretty hard to manage in that. If you can share the, such kind of the knowledge, it's also welcome. And yes. So, so it could be a good objective to, to, to have such a high number of attendees. And for, for US, uh, also to, uh, to new OpenStack day. So. Um, yeah, so we we did, I think the new ones were New York, uh, which was in New York City, and Mountain West, which we did in Salt Lake City, which was awesome uh, at, to cover. Joseph George was, was part of that. Um, Gary was part of that commu community. Uh, so, but we had the ones that were established. We, we did OpenStack Silicon Valley, which was um, you know pretty well attended, and OpenStack Seattle we did as well. So we had the regular ones, but we did add New York and Mountain West. So again, later if we have time, we might talk about what we're thinking about doing for OpenStack Days this year. We're, we're gonna probably do something very different. Um, there's nothing on the schedule now for, for the US OpenStack Days because we have some that some things in process, but those were the new ones, but don't expect them to be that this year. Okay, so now Martin, some, uh, some new data about uh, the community. Yeah, basically we just need to see the numbers. So we have fantastic growth and uh, I think the user group community size is very well balanced between the continents of the world. So maybe we can improve somewhere in South America and so in Africa. Notable. And if we are looking for, for the overall growth since Barcelona, so the North America has fantastic numbers and, and everything is growing very well. It, it, this, this is hilarious. Uh, we're like the smallest, but you guys know with statistics, right? It's hard to grow percentage-wise when you're already really big. I'm looking at this and I'm like, we suck, 9%. Oh, crap, we have 26,000 members. Okay, anyway, just in yeah, case you're just glancing at this and not paying attention yeah, to Yeah, but the base was a little bit different. It's easy to grow when you're small. <laughs> okay, just saying. Oh, John, you're here. John Sardara, San Diego user group. I was talking about you earlier. and. Um, and Tom, I was talking about you, and now I'm seeing people. I'm going to stop talking about people because I don't talk about people when they're in the room. Now you're on your own. Kidding. Uh, so we are speaking of OpenStack events. So we have uh, we have started to to report for the. So you said for US, it's not still uh, completely defined the scheduling. No. Um, do you want me to talk about that now? Okay. So speaking of John Stadaris. Uh, and and Robert Cathy and the people who have been involved, in, Gary Kevorkian, the people who have been involved in bringing us these OpenStack days of the U.S. So last year we did Silicon Valley, Salt Lake City, New York, um, Mountain West, and Texas and Virginia got canceled, right? We didn't end up doing Virginia? Did we do Virginia? No. Okay. So we had a few others planned, but that, I think those are the four that we actually ended up doing. Um, this is a hard thing for resources, it's a hard thing for the foundation to support, it's a lot of travel for the presenters, it's just um, a lot. I mean, and, uh, and we can thank Denise who is working a lot uh, to support. Uh, in which region? 
uh, for, from the foundation to help for oh, organization. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> yes. So then you know. Um, so we we were, so this year, and I really got to credit John for this. To coming up with uh, a way to kind of franchise this, if we can use a, a business term or templatize it, and figure out how can we make this easier on everybody, on the speakers, on the foundation, on the regions, um, and particularly the regions who it's, you know, Silicon Valley is easy because we, we have a lot of content there that just exists there and people will come there and we have speakers there. But what about the regions where it's a little bit harder to get the speakers and it's a little bit harder to get the people? So, um, so John came up with this phenomenal idea about how to kind of build a template and more franchise this. Um, maybe we hit universities so that the, you know, maybe we make it like like a meetup, but an all-day thing, and it's technical content, and it has hands-on labs, and it and it's like this kind of glorified meetup, and it has more, th you know, um, presentations at the end. But you know, we get cheap resources because the university signs up, and we get you know, cheap servers and storage and network, you know, the, the compute and all that because the university signs up. Um, and then, or we get a group of speakers who are willing to commit to three different open stack days. Okay, you live in Silicon Valley, but then you also are gonna do Portland, you're also gonna do Colorado. So we're working this out still, and, and if you have thoughts and want to help us, you know, let us know. Um, but with the U.S., we, we don't want to do what we did last year, where we just kind of exhausted the concept, and we had so, you know, and it was the, I think I spoke at all four of them, um, and you were probably at all four of them, and, uh, and as were you, I believe. And so, you know, and I, I probably could point to the foundation members here that also had to cover all four of them. So we're trying to figure out how to best support the community in a way to bring the resources to the areas that don't normally get the resources but can't support uh, you know, trying to fill the rooms and get all the money and get all the contents and all that. So it's a little bit of a work in process for the U.S. for this summer. Um, and we'll kick it off with the OpenStack 7th birthday party. That'll probably be the first wave of it with hands-on trainings and labs and things like that. And then we'll go into OpenStack days from there. And did it work? They did it kind of like a roadshow. Yeah. Where they basically packed up with some of the sponsors, content. We did a, like a simple sort of like you know, yep. three cities and then we'll do it in yeah. three or four days. Did it work? Yeah. Okay. That's, oh, was it successful? That's what, that's what I was trying to get at. That idea of like, you say, templatizing it and just basically yeah. saying, okay, can you minimize the effort for everybody? Yeah. Yeah, so we might try that. And John's putting together a phenomenal blueprint for that. Okay, yeah, yeah. You could do it in Europe that way as well, mm -hmm. or whatever the regions, you know. We want to package this, you know, OpenStack days in a box. Does that work? OpenStack days in a box. Yeah, yeah, but basically it is a bit more complex question because you need to manage the sponsorship and everything else and it is not always but, but, as trivial. But, but also we were Maybe you do it that way too, right? But yeah, because we were discussing about difficulties for some um, event to get sponsors. So also perhaps it could be for some groups helping to share sponsor yeah. uh, for a tour. It's like a, exactly. a big a, a rock band. So Sponsor the tour. You, you can sing and uh, you the will idea. make the battery, Martin. <laughs> So, so yeah, sh sharing the sharing the sponsor also could could be an idea. You you were speaking of Japan, where you have a huge budget and the uh, and uh, it could be helpful. Of course, sponsorship is the one with a nightmare for me because of the budget is big. <laughs> and also, you can see the each region have the same months, same days. For example, June is maybe Europe, and July is Asia, like that. So. We are currently uh, controlling the how often and when we will hold the OpenStack days. In this case, maybe the contents material and the sponsor budget is also can match in the some regions, I think. But it's not working well. <laughs> not started yet, but. So that kind of the, yes, uh, activity is also the good because of the 
you can see a lot of the day's event and maybe the foundation's cost and I, I mean the travel and give the sessions. It's also the big effort to the day's events. So we need to reduce the such kind of the cost and uh, some uh, such kind of things I need, I think so. So, but of course, it's uh, kind of the movement, <laughs> and maybe the last year, OpenStack Day's event held in the more than 20, red, around 30s in the world, and this year maybe more than 30, 40 events in the all around the world. So we have to, uh, how to say, mm, need more the change and uh, finding out a good uh, process or something, we, we need to discussing it more and more, I think, yes. What do you think, Marcel? I have a question for you guys. Do you find that you get more out of an OpenStack Days than you would get just running your meetup, your monthly meetup? I mean, you could take that content and, ha and, and offer the same content over, you could do it monthly, bi-monthly, you know, bi-weekly. So why at so, OpenStack Days oh, oh, over a meetup? And I'm just being a little bit devil's advocate, but just so curious. It's a, yes, uh, my opinion, but uh, why I started the OpenStack Days because of the, such a meetup, it's uh, um, very the frequently doing, but it's only for the one technology sites and uh, nobody can educate the OpenStack market itself. So uh, it's better to do the little bit more business side event in the locally. That's why I started the days. So days event is not only the technology, but also the marketing and uh, businesses, user experience, such kind of the things is mixed on the event. So uh, globally we can, do the such kind of things in this global summit, but uh, in the local there is nothing. So that's why, yes, it's a, maybe the differences between the meetup and the uh, days. In, in like in Brazil, we doing uh, regular meetups, more not so big, uh, like OpenStack Day, and uh, uh, talk about one only subject, no, 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 uh, any subject. Yeah, basically my experience the. Yeah, my experience that so my experience that uh, with OpenStack days we can reach a very different audience. So the meetups are providing a very good base for an initial audience, but with the OpenStack days we we usually are shooting on a region. So the meetups used to happen usually after work during uh, during a work day. And, and the OpenStack days usually a one day or a larger scale events where usually most of the people from the region, we, we had basically visitors from more than 10 countries for the Hungarian event. So it is the largest event in the region, which is doing OpenStack. Yeah, and it's really more oriented uh, business and for, for, for friends, we are running really technical events. So some, some events are less technical for beginners, but uh, it's really driving different type of people. You have still lots of technical people, but, uh, but more business and people also who, who want to, to discover OpenStack. So, and I, and I think some people who know OpenStack for a long time, uh, like, uh, Aki was speaking of veteran, they are still waiting this type of event because uh, they know OpenStack, so perhaps some guys are not coming in Meetup, but they, they are coming to this big event because they will choose uh, content and they, 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 they will have lots of content for, for a big event like OpenStack Day. I think for us it's a little different because we do a summit here in the US or in North America, so there is a place for the marketing and the vendors to go. And, and I, 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 I totally get your point, and that's what I wanted you to say, you know, the, the difference between a meetup, which is not vendor oriented and not a vendor pitch in any way, whereas you get a little bit of an opportunity for that at the, at the days where you have booths and things like that. It's like a little mini summit, um, and you're bringing it to regions that don't get a summit. In North America, we do get a summit, so we have a little bit of that. And and you know, I, I want to talk to the foundation about this. Are we pulling from what would be at the summit? You know, when I oh, I've been running this user group 
almost four years now, and, and over the years when I ask for a show of hands of who's going to the next Open SAC Summit, over the last four years, that show of hands has been decreasing, like by a large amount. I mean, in the early days, it would be like half the room was going to a summit. And then when, for Barcelona, no one except for the presenters I had in the room, like I think I had Hirschfeld presenting because he flew in for it and um, one of the Starmers and, it, uh, and me and, and Sean Roberts was there and we were the only ones who were going to Barcelona. So we were like, wow. And the room had over 175 people in it for that particular meetup. We were doing Kubernetes as the underlive. OpenStack was a very popular topic. And so I thought, wow, okay, so this is why we bring the content to you because you're not necessarily going to go to the summit regardless of this meetup or not. I mean, it had nothing to do with us. So the OpenStack days, I think, are an opportunity to bring content like the meetups to regions that where people aren't traveling, travel budgets aren't what they used to be. It's just a different focus. Um, so I was curious about that for the other regions that don't actually get an OpenStack summit, that the OpenStack days are probably even maybe more valuable. That's why I asked. How about, how about uh, upstream training, such kind of the things is doing on the day's event in US? Or, I mean, the OpenStack newcomer need uh, some contribution educations, and uh, this global summit doing the upstream training. And we, in Japan, we our OpenStack days doing, keep doing the up, local upstream training to the people. And because of the expanding of much more newcomers to the OpenStack communities. So such kind of the things is also, the, I think, the very useful and things in the day's event, I think. Yeah. OK, basically, we have a few minutes back. And uh, I'd like to welcome Sonia on board. And, and anyway, it, it, it is good that you are here for us. And uh, okay. I, <laughs> I hope we, we will see some improvements in the communication between the ambassadors and foundation and between the ambassadors and the user groups. And, and we have some initial idea, maybe if we like to get more ambassador on board, maybe we, we can work a little ambassador onboarding process yes. that covers the proper communication and, and uh, sharing information between us adding them to the ambassador user list and and etc and the other idea we had that it would be great to see a written community re report similar to the user report that the user committee is providing for for every summit because we have a lot of data i saw that you started to collect some some changes and informations about uh, the user groups so we can make it happen and we can we can create some useful content for everyone well i'm excited to work with you all to make those things happen and they're already sort of in the pipeline uh expanding the program we've got sheila coming on who's going to be amazing um and there's processes involved that have been established to bring new people in which i put lisa through and a number of others who are we're thinking of bringing some in. So we've got that in to make it a smooth process so it's easier for the ambassadors to just jump right in and get started and not feel too lost, like we threw them in the water without a life jacket. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> kind of like when you first joined OpenStack. That's just how it feels, right? <laughs> we've all been through it. And um, with this data also, uh, with our user group, we, we, are dis we are discussing with other user groups who are asking to get some, uh, some data about uh, the attendees uh, to the event, meetup, or, or OpenStack Day. And also sharing, uh, perhaps every country uh, can be different, but sharing experience with data will also help other groups making better events or more easy to organize. So I think ambassador could be this type of glue to, to help the ambassador, um, we, 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 are, we are discussing directly between groups, but uh, ambassador can make this link on, the, on share the knowledge because sometimes uh, for, for making website, uh, we have to contact uh, over, over, uh, over groups, but uh, it's not easy. It's, uh, you, you must know the people, but, uh, but um, ambassador can improve uh, this link be between groups. I'm excited to work with you all to make that all happen.
in the next 12 months. But we don't want to scare anybody because, so I never made a, a website. I finally, I have some help now in SF Bay. It was all I could do to run two meetups a month. So I was focused on the content. I was focused on getting amazing presenters. I ha if I had to do it myself, you know, but we just kept the content going. Um, I finally got a guy, John Starmer. He's amazing and he's helping me. He built a YouTube channel, so we were archiving the videos there. Um, he's, he's, he's helping me with the Twitter feed that we put together. I can handle Twitter, but I can't handle like all the, you know, you want to know how it's really done? Talk to Stradaris over there. He built, he has like an email address. He's got a whole, um, oh my gosh. <laughs> he's got an ecosystem he's running in San Diego. He does hands-on labs. He's got, you know, a, um, a distro. He's, he's, because he gets resources from, from the local university. I mean, it's, it's, it's a little bit ridiculous. Kind of an overachiever making us all look bad. But it's phenomenal what he's done with his user group on his own, no one asked him to do it. Um, so you can do that, you can get an email list and then you can get your users to then start communicating with each other. You can, did you do a Slack channel too? What's your chat ops? Yeah, we have a Slack channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you go to OpenStack, you can go to the website, you can clone the website on Git and make your own one. Open, OpenStackSanDiego.org, clone the website on Git, yeah, he's got all his labs on a GitHub repository too after each meetup. And then also working with a, a bare metal data center provider package. Bare metal data center provider packets. I'm repeating it because it's being recorded. Okay, and they provide hardware so I can run an OpenStack cloud that we can use during the meetup. They provide hardware. He got them to donate hardware so he can run an OpenStack cloud during the meetups. Like, can we give this man a round of applause, please? John Sadara, San Diego user group. Redefining how a user group can just, ha just get it done. Other user groups, whoever's watching this on, in the worldwide ethos, um, John Sardaris, what is the, what it, you know what, can I just do this yeah. for a second? <laughs> can we just do this? Um, we'll just give them, how do they contact? Sure, so my email address, it's uh, john at openstacksandiego.org. So, and uh, the hosting provider packet, they uh, rent machines by the hour, and so they just give us access to a bare metal machine, and then uh, I've got scripts to install it. It's all it. If you go to github.com slash openstacksandiego, all the workshops that we do, all the scripts to build a lab to do the tutorials are all in GitHub. So, trying to make it available to other, other user groups to make their life easier. Yeah, I know we have super user awards, but if we could have a super user group award, my vote right there. John Sardaris, San Diego, wow. Really well done, thank you so much. Yeah. So we are quite out of time, but I think it's very important uh, to, to discuss if you have some question because uh, ambassador are working for the community. So now if you have question, uh, uh, we can hear you. Anything, ask us anything. Perhaps take the microphone. Can we give him or just he's, I'm already uh, hopping around. <laughs> Why not? Or is it me? Ah, okay. So, um, first of all, uh, thank you for your work, guys. Um, I think you're doing a great job, um, um, like uh, advertising OpenStack. Um, what I was missing, and um, actually that's why I, I also try, uh, kind of um, was thinking, how could I help you? is that, oh, selfie, thank you, <laughs> is, um, <clears throat> okay. Um, so these, these user groups are lo um, localized and, um, well, first of all, this is, um, this is the key of your success because you are like localized with those people who are interested in open second. You can go there, uh, you can advertise to them, you can, uh, you can help them. But uh, what's completely orthogonal to this is if um, some people or companies are interested in a specific um, set of skills and knowledge and know-how um, to operate on OpenStack in a, in, a, um, in a certain environment, for example, like in, in the DACH, so Germany um, area, it's um, um, motor companies, uh, automobile companies, um, or for the whole Europe, it's uh, basically uh, taco companies. And is there any uh, movement inside the ambassador program where you also try to handle this orthogonal um, 
thread of interest, meaning that not just um, connecting the people who are already are uh, localized in the same place, but also connecting people who are um, actually interested in the same subset of, of this knowledge. Yeah, basic, basically yeah. the foundation website contains the marketplace. So. Well, and you're, you so you're Germany, what, what part of Germany? Um, I'm, I'm from Switzerland. Oh, you're from Switzerland. Do you guys know each other, Chris Franks? Do you guys know? Oh, okay. We'll make some connections. But, but yeah, I think it's very interesting and uh, uh, perhaps uh, organizing or helping to, to organize a remote event with a video, or it can spread over uh, different countries, not, not only one country, but I think yeah, it's a very interesting idea. So. Uh, we, we keep your name and perhaps also we, we can discuss of this at the end of the session. Um, because if we take uh, yeah, the, the telco, uh, um, we are discussing with users in science, HPC. Um, if you go in a user group, yeah, they will not find uh, many people in their interest. And yeah, it could be very, very interesting to be a catalyst of this type of, uh, of groups. That, that could be perhaps a little bit more virtual, but uh, it's, uh, it's very interesting. Yeah. And I just mentioned Christian Frank, who organizes Open Sack Days Germany, uh, and is one of my favorite people. <laughs> we worked together for about six years. No one I'd rather go to prison with. Awesome guy. Um, um, and yeah. really in, entrenched in the Open Sack community. So you guys are kind of sort of in the same region, so you should talk. So yeah, new question. The same question, uh, but. In trying to start something, it takes a huge amount of time. And I know we were talking before, it takes an enormous amount of time to get all the resources together to really provide great content for the users who come to the groups. That being said, a lot of you all have done a lot of work, and I think that's kind of what you're asking. Um, besides like this awesome website that you've created uh, and any other, is there a way to kind of like share that information so that if someone has a little less time but wants to get something started, um, on a more limited basis that there's automatically a central place to go to find a lot of great content. Sonia? <laughs> uh, that, that's definitely an issue that's been uh, raised in the past, uh, in the last couple of months. Um, even things like finding speakers, some groups are just unsure, okay, where do I go, what do I do? Um, so we're working to, it's another work in progress. I joined in January, so a lot of things like going on. Uh, but we're hoping to get some sort of repository or a guide or some sort of thing that user group uh, leaders can just go through or someone who's looking to start and just go, okay, let's tick the boxes. Where can I start for this? Where should I go for that? Like a how-to 101 for user groups, basically. Um, it, so, for example, like Girls Who Code, they have suggested things to start with, and then that's in a central repository so that you can pull that. Um, so, yeah, same idea. Yeah, so something we'd love to work on and make happen so it makes it easier for anyone like you to just come through and start something, and then we just sort of guide it and get and get it through the process as well if, the, you know, you have questions. So, yeah. And Major Rodriguez, can like we give her a hand for the phenomenal keynote that she did on day one? The, probably the best keynote of all. Um, and we had a talk earlier, and I said, "How do you want to get involved? How much do you want to get involved? Can we get you involved?" And I love it. I love the passion of this community. It's people like you guys that want to bring this thing forward, and it's so phenomenal. So mm. awesome, awesome, awesome. So just to yeah, quick quick question. We are five minutes at, out of time. It's okay. Yeah, it's great. Uh, first, uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to for all your work. Yeah, I, I I come from Vietnam, and uh, we become an official user group. And uh, the second here is I want to ask you a question: that is there any requirement for a small user group in Vietnam? Uh, we are official, so we can run uh, user open stack day. So, is there any requirement for? Uh, for each small user group for to run the open stack day yeah yeah you know of a few a, a few years ago we have only two or three companies that test that uh, run testing open stack and now we have uh, about 10 company that uh, run open stack in in the production so it's still a small number so it is this worthy for run an open stack day in Vietnam yeah, yeah, basically it depends on the number, but I suggest to start work on it and uh, talk with the other guys who are organizing OpenStack days 
and I'm sure that you will get all of the help from, from the community. Uh, from us. Uh, yeah, yeah, because I think there is no rule. It's for, it's for this, it's very good to discuss with ambassador because they are, they are sharing experience with other people. So sometimes when, when it's possible to, to make, to create some package, to publish, so, so some, some, some uh, information on guidelines are published, but uh, also uh, it's very good to discuss with ambassador and, and people who organize events with 3,000 or also has yes, organized 3,000 people or less for meetup uh, can, can help a lot. Yeah, yeah. okay. Thank you. Okay. And the last question. Uh, quick question. Thank you all for the great works. And I'm the one running, one of the people running OpenZ Taiwan user group. So we we face we are facing a big problem is that um, we are hard to find speaker for the meetups. So is there any ideas on how to encourage people to speak in meetups? So, we, yeah. So we have the speaker bureau. So you want it, so you are you are working you are working on it. So. Uh, yes. And there's also a tool called the uh, Foundation Speaker Bureau, which you can go to online. It has a list or like a repository of all the different speakers um, that have. Like they either participated in a summit or an OpenStack day and spoke, and they said, "Yep, I would like to be contacted as a potential speaker at a meetup." And there will be information like whether they're willing to travel or what topics they can talk on. So that's a great place to uh, go and find particular people who might be able to come down and, and give a talk. I can talk to you afterwards and, and give uh, you the information. Local, local speakers. So there's there's actually a lot of people working on OpenStack, but they're not willing to share. What region are you in? Uh, Taiwan. Do you have major conferences that come through? One of the things I would recommend is when, if you have a major conference coming through your town, grab some speakers that are there already. They would often love to come and speak to the local communities because it's an access that they don't normally have and they'll be in town. Also, you can look at other user groups. Our, ours is one from San Francisco, meetup.com slash OpenStack. Ping any of those people, they travel. They travel a lot, and sometimes they're willing to come out to you, so there's content there that can come to you. But definitely the conferences that come through your town, hit up those speakers. Just find a, a cool, even if it's not you know, OpenStack, it might be DevOps, it might be Cloud, it might be some peripheral you know, containers, of course, Container Worlds, Developer Week. There's a lot of conferences, I bet, that come through your town. Just find an interesting speaker and have them come and speak at your meetup. They will probably love it and be happy to do so. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, is that it? Thank you, guys.